Omar Koch. Welcome back. Joining me now to discuss President Obama's strategy to combat ISIS is James Baker. Baker was Secretary of State under President George H.W. Bush during the first Gulf War in the early 90s and played a key role putting together the coalition to take on Iraq, Saddam Hussein and liberate Kuwait. He has one of the deepest government resumes ever. He served as White House Chief of Staff under Ronald Reagan, going on to serve as Secretary of Treasury in Reagan's second term. And after serving as Secretary of State for Bush 41, he finished up that term, becoming his Chief of Staff. And this is James Baker's 28th appearance on the program. And remarkably, I'm apparently the 11th Meet the Press moderator to interview you. <laughs> Secretary Baker, thanks for coming on this morning. A pleasure to be with you, Chuck. All right, let me start with this. The president's plan, is it the right plan? Well, it's the president's plan, so it better be the right plan. Uh, it's, got, uh, it's got some problems with it, and your panel was just talking about some of those. The biggest, of course, is who are our, quote, partners on the ground that right. the president referred to in his speech. And I don't know where they come from. Uh, when we uh, when we did this in uh, in 1991, that is built a coalition to right. accomplish something in the Middle East. We two hundred thousand troops. Five hundred thousand. We put we had five hundred thousand U.S. troops. Right, and you had an addition for Desert 000. Storm, and then we had addition thousands of troops from other countries. So there wasn't any question about our resolve on the part of those people we were trying to bring into the coalition. But you, uh, everybody tells me, and I'm not. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps, but I'm not a military man, a military expert. You gotta have some people on the ground. You can't do this just with air power. And so we've gotta have special ops forces or we've gotta have some people who can uh, advise this uh, ground force, if it's the Iraqi army, who can collect intelligence, who can guide air airstrikes. And if they're not gonna be Americans, who are they gonna be? So we're, we're going to have to have some people on the ground, but we're also going to have to have some people to take territory after the airstrike. Well, and that's this whole hope that the president himself was skeptical of this modern uh, Syrian opposition. So the other idea is you hope that it's Sunni countries, other Sunni countries that provide the boots on the, the combat troops. So where's Saudi Arabia? Obviously, it's just it's not coming. Obviously, the Jordanians, the Emirates, the Turks. All of those military forces, all of whom built their militaries with U.S. money, by the way, where are they? Well, they're not here. And, and they may not be here because we're not uh, on the ground. Now, you I'm think not, that's the issue? I'm not, well, I, I'm not suggesting that we need to get into another ground war in the Middle East. Uh, but I'm just saying we cannot do this without having some forces on the ground that can help our air, air campaign. You have to have that. And that's, I think, I'm afraid to say what I think it's going to be. It's going to be U.S. Special Ops Forces and uh, people like that on the ground because we don't have any, uh, any other forces uh, being offered to us. You know, when you built your coalition, uh, uh, it was one of the... Uh one of the things I read was talking about the controversy surrounding you wanted to bring Syria into your coalition. There were some that were skeptical of bringing in Syria. Yeah. Today, that country that there is a debate about, do you bring in the coalition, is Iran. That's right. If you were Secretary of State right now, would you be, because you were, you were adamant, saying, you know what? They're with us on this. We need them in the coalition. This was about Syria at the That's time. Right. Yeah. Do you feel this? Would you be well, feeling the same can, way about Iran? And of course, they they sent. They not only joined the coalition. They sent troops, right. uh, and some of those troops fought. I would not do that today with respect to Iran for one for one purpose for one reason. Uh, we've got to we've got to prove that this that we're not jumping in on the side of the Shia in this fight between the Shia, Shia and the Sunni. Right. And so we need to bring, we need to have Sunni support. If we bring Iran in at this point, we'll lose that Sunni support. So the coalition and focus should be all Sunni. For this purpose, yeah. for this purpose, in the long term, in the long term, the Middle East is mired in turmoil everywhere you look. And in the long term, somebody's going to have to organize a, a negotiation or a conference or something to deal with these conflicts because these conflicts uh, foment terrorism. And everybody in the region, every country in the region or in the world, for that matter, would like to see us take out, take out ISIS. Mm -hmm. But after that's over, there's going to be more coming if we don't do this. We need to pull all the countries of the region together. Mm -hmm. We need to add the EU, Russia, China, uh, and, and, uh, and, of course, ourselves. 
and have a and have a discussion and a conference and a negotiation over how we empower the moderate forces in the region, how we limit the extremists in the region, and how we do all of this without further inflaming the Shia Sunni uh, conflict. The cloud of the Iraq war seems to color everything. It's the reason why the president isn't committing any combat troops into this right now. Uh, I know you've been asked this before. You chose, you, the Bush 41 administration chose not to take out Saddam Hussein. Right. Do you believe if you had, that basically the 90s would look like what we're dealing uh, we, we, with today? Well, well, we were afraid of that. That's why we didn't, you know, for, for two years after we left office, why didn't you guys take care of Saddam when you had the chance? Every time I'd go out and give a speech or something, right. I'd get the question. Well, now people see why we didn't. Because we were, wor we were worried about this very thing happening. That, that, that there would be ethnic divisions and that the country would split apart. And this and, is exactly what I'm saying. So, and, Vice President, so I take it you don't agree with Vice President Cheney, who said this week again, if he had to do it over again, he'd do the Iraq war again. Well, I don't agree with this. I don't agree that, that because they did the Iraq war is why we're where we are. Where we are. I think you can make the same argument about uh, Obama's failure to uh, to uh, arm the Syrian opposition earlier, or yeah, or uh, not leaving a residual force in Iraq. You can argue all those things about the past. The problem is we have a huge issue here. What do we do about it going forward? There's no country in the world that could pull together the kind of a, a co conference and, or negotiation I'm talking about, except the United States of America. And we need to we need to do that. Whether we can still do that or not, I don't. No. When we put our coalition together, we had 500,000 U.S. troops on the ground. We had uh, a specific uh, goal uh, uh, right. within a limited time frame, kick Iraq out of Kuwait. And America was, was respected by its allies and uh, feared by its enemies. We're and, not there anymore. And oh, by the way, you actually got the war paid for, most of it paid well, we for. We got other and people exactly. to pay for the war, that's, that's right. correct. James Baker, former Secretary of State. Thanks for coming on Meet the Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. Coming up, we'll do a little politics here. Hillary Clinton is making a